Chapter 46 Oppressions Chapter 1 Retaliation on the Day of Judgment Narrated Abu Sa'id al Qudri Allah's Messenger said, When the believers pass safely over the bridge across hell, they will be stopped at a bridge in between hell and paradise where they will retaliate upon each other for the injustices done among them in the world. And when they get purified of all their sins, they will be admitted into paradise by him in whose hand the l- hands the life of Muhammad is everybody will recognize his dwelling in paradise better than he recognizes his dwelling in this world. Chapter 2 The Statement of Allah Ta'ala No doubt, the curse of Allah is on the Salimun. Narrated Safwan bin Muris al-Masini While I was walking with Ibn Umar holding his hand, a man came in front of us and asked, What have you heard from Allah's Messenger about an Najwa? Ibn Umar said, I heard Allah's Messenger saying, Allah will bring a believer near him and shelter him with his screen and ask him, Did you commit such and such sins? He will say, Yes, my Lord. Allah will keep on asking him till he will confess all his sins and will think that he is ruined. Allah will say, I did screen your sins in the world and I forgive them for you today. And then he will be given the book of his good deeds regarding infidels and hypocrites. Their evil acts will be exposed publicly. And the witnesses will say, these are the people who lied against their Lord. Behold, the curse of Allah is upon the wrongdoers. 11.18 Chapter 3 A Muslim should not oppress another Muslim. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar Allah's Messenger said, A Muslim is a brother of another Muslim, so he should not oppress him, nor should he hand him over to an oppressor. Whoever fulfilled the needs of his brother, Allah will fulfill his needs. Whoever brought his Muslim brother out of this out of a discomfort, Allah will bring him out of the discomforts of the day of resurrection. And whoever screened a Muslim, Allah will screen him on the day of resurrection. Chapter 4 Help Your Brother Narrated Anas bin Malik Allah's Messenger said, Help your brother, whether he is an oppressor or he is an oppressed one. Narrated Anas Allah's Messenger said, Help your brother, whether he is an oppressor or he is an oppressed one. People asked, O Allah's Messenger, it is alright to help him if he is oppressed, but how should we help him if he is an, an oppressor? The Prophet said, by, prevent, by preventing him from oppressing others. Chapter 5 To Help the Oppressed Narrated Muawiyah bin Suwaid I heard al Bara bin Asib saying, the Prophet, the Prophet orders us to do seven things and prohibited us from doing seven other things. Then al Bara mentioned the following, 1. To pay a visit to the sick, inquiring about his health. 2. To follow up, to follow funeral processions. 3. To say to a sneezer, may Allah be merciful to you, if he says, praise be to Allah. 4. To return greetings. 5. To help the oppressed. 6. To accept invitations. 7. To help others to fulfill their oaths. See hadith number 7503, no, 753, volume 7. Narrated Abu Musa. <coughs> Narrated Abu Musa. The Prophet said, A believer to another believer is like a building 
whose different parts enforced each other, the prophet then clasped, clasped his hands with the fingers interlaced while saying that. Chapter 6 To retaliate upon an oppression, oppressor. Chapter 7 Forgiveness granted by the oppressed person. Chapter 8 As Sulm, oppression will be a darkness. Narrated Ibn Umar. The Prophet said, Oppression will be a darkness on the day of resurrection. Chapter 9 The Curse of the Oppressed. Narrated Ibn Abbas. The Prophet sent Mu'ad to Yemen and said, Be afraid from the curse of the oppressed, as there is no screen between his invocation and Allah. Chapter 10 if the, oppressed unfor- if the oppressed unforgives the oppressor Narrated Abu Huraira Allah's Messenger said Whoever has oppressed another person concerning his reputation or anything else he should beg, for- he should beg him to forgive him before the day of resurrection when there will be no money to compensate for wrong deeds but if, but if he has good deeds, those good deeds will be taken from him according to his oppression, which he has done. And if he has no good deeds, the sins of the oppressed person will be loaded on him. Chapter 11 If the oppressed person forgives the oppressor, he has no right to back out. Narrated Aisha Regarding the explanation of the following verse, if a wife fears cruelty or desertion, 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 desertion on her husband's part. 428. A man may dislike his wife and intend to divorce her. So she says to him, I give up my rights, so do not divorce me. The above verse was revealed concerning such a case. Chapter 12 If a person allows another to have his right Narrated Sal bin Sa'd as Sa'idi A drink milk mixed with water was brought to Allah's messenger who drank some of it. A boy was sitting to his right and some old man to his left. Allah's messenger said to the boy do you allow me to give the rest of the drink to those to these people? The boy said, O oh Allah's messenger, I will not give preference to anyone over me to drink the rest of it, from which you have drunk. Allah's messenger then handed the bowl of drink to the boy. See Hadith number 541. Chapter 13 The sin of him who obs- usurps the land of others. Narrated Said bin Said. Allah's Messenger said, Whoever usurps the land of somebody unjustly, his neck will be encircled with it down the seven earths on the day of resurrection. Narrated Abu Salama that there was a dispute between him and some people about a piece of land. When he told Aisha about it, she said, O Abu Salama, avoid taking the, taking the land unjustly. For the Prophet said, Whoever usurps even one span of the land of somebody, his neck will be encircled with it down the seven earths. Narrated Salim's father, Ye Abdullah. The Prophet said, Whoever takes a piece of the land of others unjustly, He will sink down the seven earths on the day of resurrection. Chapter 14 If somebody allows another to do something Narrated Jabala We were in Medina with some of the Iraqi people and we were struck with famine and Ibn As-Subayr used to give us dates. Ibn Umar used to pass by and say The Prophet forbade us to eat two dates at a time unless one takes the permission of one's companions. 
narrated Abu Masud. There was an Ansari man called Abu Shu'ab who had a slave butcher. Abu Shu'ab said to him, prepare a meal sufficient for five persons so that I might invite the Prophet besides other four persons. Abu Shu'ab had seen the signs of hunger on the face of the Prophet and so he invited him. Another man who was not invited followed the Prophet. The Prophet said to Abu Shu'ab, this man has followed us, do you allow him to share the meal? Abu Shu'ab said yes. Chapter 15 The Statement of Allah Ta'ala Yet he is the most quarrelsome of the opponents. Narrated Aisha The Prophet said the most hated person in the sight of Allah is the most quarrel quarrelsome person. Chapter 16 the sin of a man who quarrels unjustly. Narrated Um Salama. The wife of the Prophet, Allah's Messenger, heard some people quarreling at the door of his dwelling. He came out and said, I am only a human being, and opponents come to me to settle their problems. Maybe someone amongst you can present his case most more eloquently than the other, whereby I may consider him true. And give, him, and give a verdict in his favor. So if I give the night, so if I give the right of a Muslim to another by mistake, then it is really a portion of hellfire. He has the option to take or give up before the day of resurrection. Chapter 17: The person who behaves impudently. Narrated Abdullah bin Amr. The Prophet said, whoever has the following four characters will be a hypocrite and whoever has one of the following four characteristics will have one characteristic of hypocrisy until he gives it up. These are 1. Whenever he talks, he tells a lie. 2. Whenever he makes a promise, he breaks it. 3. Whenever he makes a covenant, he proves treacherous. 4. And whenever he quarrels, he behaves impudently, in an evil, insulting manner. See Hadith number 33, volume 1. Chapter 18 The Retaliation of the Oppressed Person Narrated Aisha Hind bint Utba, Abu Sufyan's wife, came and said, O Allah's Messenger, Abu Sufyan is a miser. Is there any harm if I spend something from his property for our children? He said, there is no harm for you if you feed them from it justly and reasonably with no extra vagents. Narrated Uqba bin Amir We said to the Prophet, you send us out and it happens that we have to stay with people who do not entertain us. What do you think about it? He said to us, if you stay with some people and they entertain you as they should for a guest, accept their hospitality, but if they don't, take the right of the guest from them. Chapter 19 About Sheds Narrated Umar When Allah took away the soul of his prophet at his death, the Ansar assembled in the shed of Bani Saida. I said to Abu Bakr, let us go. So we come to them, yeah, to Ansar, at the shed of Bani Saida. See Hadith number 19, volume 5, for details. Chapter 20 Not to prevent a neighbor from fixing a peg. Narrated Al Adaich. Abu Huraira said, Allah's Messenger said, No one should prevent his neighbor from fixing a wooden peg. In his wall, Abu Huraira said to his companions, Why do I find you averse to it? By Allah, I certainly will narrate it to you. Chapter 21 Spilling Wine on the Way Narrated Anas I was the butler of the people in the house of Abu Tala, and in those days, Drinks were prepared from dates, 
Allah's Messenger ordered somebody to announce that alcoholic drinks has been had been prohibited. Abu Tala ordered me to go out and spill the wine. I went out and spilled it, and it flowed in the streets of Medina. Some people said some people were killed and wine was still in their stomachs. On that the divine revelation came. On those who believe and do good deeds, there is no blame for what they ate in the past. 593 Chapter 22 Open courtyards of houses and sitting on the ways Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri The Prophet said, Beware, avoid sitting on he roads. Ways The people said, There is no way out of it, as there are our sitting places where we have talks. The Prophet said, If you must sit there, then observe the rights of the way. They asked, What are the rights of the way? He said, They are the lowering of your gazes on seeing what is illegal to look at, refraining from harming people, returning greetings, advocating good and forbidden, forbidding evil. Chapter 23 The Digging of Wells on the Ways Narrated Abu Hurairah The Prophet said, A man felt very thirsty while he was on the way. There he came across a well. He went down the well, quenched his thirst, and came out. Meanwhile he saw a dog panting and licking mud because of excessive thirst. He said to himself, This dog is suffering from thirst as I did. So he went down the well again and filled his shoe with water and watered it. Allah thanked him for that deed and forgave him. The people said, O oh Allah's Messenger, is there a reward for us in serving the animals? He replied, Yes, there is a re reward for serving any, anima any animate living, beings, living being. See Hadith number 551 Chapter 24 To remove harmful things from the roads Chapter 25 Looking or not looking upon other houses Narrated Usama bin Said once the Prophet stood at the top of one of the castles or higher buildings of Medina and said, Do you see what I see? No doubt I am seeing the spots of afflictions amongst your houses, as numerous as spots where raindrops fall during a heavy rain. See Hadith number 102. Narrated Abdullah bin Abbas I had been eager to ask Umar about the two ladies from among the wives of the Prophet regarding whom Allah said in the Quran saying, If you two wives of the Prophet, namely Aisha and Hafsa, turn in repentance to Allah, your hearts are indeed so inclined to oppose what the Prophet likes. 66.4 Till performed the Hajj along with Umar. And on our way back from Hajj, he went aside to answer the call of nature, and I also went aside along with him carrying a tumbler of water. When he had answered the call of nature and returned, I poured water on his hands from the tumbler, and he performed ablution. I said, O chief of the believers, who were the two ladies from among the wives of the Prophet? To whom Allah said, If you two return in repent repentance, 66.4 He said, I am astonished at your question, O Ibn Abbas, they were Aisha and Hafsa. Then Umar went on relating the narration and said, I and an Ansari neighbor of mine from Bani Umayyah bin Said, who used to live in Awali al Medina, used to visit the Prophet in turns. He used to go one day and I another day. When I went, I will bring him the news of what had happened that day, regarding the instructions and orders, and when he went, he used to do the same for me. We, the people of Karish, used to have authority over women, 
but when we came to live with the Ansar, we noticed that the Ansari woman had the upper hand over their men. So our woman started acquiring the habits of the Ansari woman. Once I showed it at my wife, and she paid me back in my coin, coin, and I disliked that she should answer me back. She said, why do you take it ill that I retort upon you? By Allah, the wives of the Prophet retort upon him, and some of them may not speak with him for the whole day till night. What she said scared me, and I said to her, whoever amongst them does so will be a great loser. Then I dressed myself and went to Hafsa and asked her, does, does any of you keep Allah's messenger angry all the day? long till night she replied in the affirmative i said she is ruined losing person and will never have success doesn't she fear that allah may get angry for the anger of allah's messenger and thus she will be ruined don't ask allah's messenger too many things and don't retort upon him in any case and don't desert him demand from me whatever you like and don't be tempted to tempted to imitate your neighbor Aisha in her behavior towards the Prophet for she Aisha is more beautiful than you and more beloved to Allah's messenger in those days it was rumored that Ghassan a tribe living in Sham was getting prepared was getting prepared the horses to invade us my companion went to the Prophet on the day of his turn went and returned to us at night and knocked at my door violently asking whether I was sleeping I was scared by the hard knocking and came out to him he said that a great thing had happened I asked him what is it have Ghassan come he replied that it was worse and more serious than that and added that Allah's apostle had divorced all his wives I said Hafsa is a ruined loser I expected that would happen some day, so I dressed myself and offered the Fajr prayer with the Prophet. Then the Prophet entered an upper room and stayed there alone. I went to Hafsa and found her weeping. I asked her, why are you weeping? Did I warn you? Have Allah's messenger divorced you all? She replied, I don't know. He is there in the upper room. I then went out and came to the pulpit found a group of people around it and some of them were weeping then I sat with them for some time but could not endure the situation so I went to the upper room where the Prophet was and requested to a black slave of his will you get the permission of Allah's Apostle for Umar to enter the slave went in talked to the Prophet about it and came out saying I mentioned you to him but he did not reply so I went and sat with the people who were sitting by the pulpit, but I could not bear the situation. So I went to the slave again and said, Will you get the perm will you get he permission for Umar? He went in and brought the same reply as before. When I was leaving, behold, the slave called me saying, Allah's messenger has granted you permission. So I entered upon the Prophet and saw him lying on a mat without wedding on it. And the mat had left its mark on the body of the Prophet and he was leaning on a leather pillow stuffed with, stuffed with palm fires. I greeted him and while standing I said, have you divorced your wives? He raised his eyes to me and replied in a negative and then while still standing I said chatting Will you heed what I say, O Allah's Messenger? We the people of Quraysh used to have the upper hand over our women, wives. And when we came to the people whose women had the upper hand over them, Umar told the whole story about his wife. On that the Prophet smiled. Umar further said, I then said, I went to Hafsa and said to her, Do not be tempted to imitate your companion Aisha, for she is more beautiful than you and more beloved to the Prophet. The Prophet smiled again. When I saw him smiling, I sat down and cast a glance at the room. And by Allah, I couldn't see anything of importance but three heights.
free heights. I said to Allah's Messenger, Invoke Allah to make your followers prosperous, for the Persians and the Byzantines have been made prosperous and given worldly luxuries, though they do not worship Allah. The Prophet was leaning then, and on hearing my speech he sat straight, and said, O oh, Ibn al-Khattab, do you have any doubt that the hereafter is better than this world? These people have been given rewards of their good deeds in this world only. I asked the Prophet, please ask Allah's forgiveness for me. The Prophet did not go to his wives because of the secret which Hafsa had disclosed to Aisha, and he said that he would not go to his wives for one month as he was angry with them. When Allah admonished him for his oath that he will not approach Maria when 29 days had passed. The Prophet went to Aisha first of all. She said to him, you took an oath that you will not come to us for one month and today only 29 days have passed as I have been counting them, them day by day. The Prophet said, the month is also of 29 days. That month consisted of 29 days. Aisha said, when the, the, when the divine revelation of choice was revealed, the Prophet started with me, saying to me, I am telling you something, but you need not hurry to give the reply till you can consult your parents. Aisha knew that her parents would not advise her to part with the Prophet. The Prophet said to Allah, the Prophet said that Allah had said, O Prophet, say to your wives, if you desire the life of this world and its glitter, then come, I will make a provision for you and set you free in a handsome manner. But if you seek Allah and his apostle and the home of the hereafter, then verily Allah has prepared for the good doers amongst you a great reward. 33.28 Aisha said, Am I to consult my parents about this? I indeed prefer Allah, his apostle, and the home of the hereafter. After that the Prophet gave the choice to his other wives and they also gave the same reply as Aisha did. Narrated Anas, Allah's messenger took an oath that he would not go to his wives for one month as his foot had been sp sprained. He stayed in an upper room when Umar went to him and said, Have you divorced your wives? He said, No, but I have taken an oath, oath that I will not go to them for one month. The Prophet stayed there for 29 days and then came down and went to his wives. Chapter 26 Whoever tied his camel at the gate of the mosque. Narrated Jabir The Prophet entered the mosque and I too went there after tying the camel at the pavement of the mosque. I said to the Prophet, This is your camel. He came out and started examining the camel and said, Both the camel and its price are for you. Chapter 27 Standing and Urinating at the Dumps Narrated Hudayfa I saw Allah's Messenger coming or the Prophet came to the dumps of some people and urinated there while standing. Chapter 28 Removing a thing from the way which harms the people Narrated Abu Huraira Allah's Messenger said, While a man was on the way, he found a thorny branch of a tree there on the way and removed it. Allah thanked him for that deed and forgave him. Chapter 29 When there is a dispute about a public way Narrated Abu Huraira The Prophet judged that seven cubits should be left as a public way when there was a dispute about the land. Chapter 30 Robbing away somebody's property publicly Narrated Abdullah bin Yazid al-Ansari the Prophet forbade robbery, taking away what belongs to others without their permission, and also forbade mutilation 
or maiming of bodies. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said when an adulterer commits illegal sexual intercourse then he is not a believer at the time he is doing it and when a drinker of an alcoholic liquor drinks it then he is not a believer at the time of drinking it and when a thief steals he then he is not a believer at the time of stealing and when a robber robs and the people look at him then he is not a believer at the time of doing robbery chapter 31 the breaking of the cross and the killing of the pigs narrated Abu Huraira Allah's messenger said the hour will not be established until the son of Mary yet Jesus descends amongst you as a just ruler he will break the cross kill the pigs and abolish the jizya tax money will be in abundance so that nobody will accept it as charitable gifts Chapter 32 To Break the Pots Containing Wine Narrated Salama bin al aqwa On the day of Kaibar, the Prophet saw fires being lighted. He asked, Why are those fires being lighted? The people replied that they were cooking the meat of donkeys. He said, Break the pots and throw away their contents. The people said, Shall we throw away their contents and wash the pots rather than break them? He said, wash them. Narrated Abdullah bin Masud. The Prophet entered Mecca and at that time there were 360 idols around the Kaaba. He started, he started stabbing the idols with a stick he had in his hand and reciting, Truth, Islam has come and falsehood, disbelief has vanished. Narrated Al Qasim, Aisha said that she hung a certain decorated with pictures of animals on a cupboard. The Prophet tore that curtain and she turned it into two cushions which remained in the house of the Prophet to sit on. Chapter 33 One who fights to protect his property. Narrated Abdullah bin Ahmed bin Alas. I heard a prophet saying, Whoever is killed while protecting his property, then he is a martyr. Chapter 34 If a person breaks something belonging to somebody. Narrated Anas. While the prophet was with one of his wives, one of the mothers of the believers, yet yeah, one of his wives, sent a wooden bowl containing food with a servant. The wife in whose house he was sitting stroked the bowl with her hand and broke it. The prophet collected the shattered pieces and put the food back in it and said, Eat. He kept the servant and the bowl till he had eaten the food. Then the prophet gave another unbroken bowl to the servant and kept the broken one. Chapter 35 If one pulls down a wall, should should build a similar one in its place. Narrated Abu Huraira Allah's Messenger said there was an Israeli man called Jurei. While he was praying, his mother came and called him, but he did not respond to her call. He said to himself, whether he should continue the prayer or reply to his mother, she came to him the second time and called him and said, O oh Allah, do not let him die until he sees the faces of prostitutes. Jure used to live in a hermitage. A woman said that she would entice Jure, so she went to him and presented herself for an evil act, but he refused. She then went to a shepherd and allowed him to commit an illegal sexual intercourse with her, and later she gave birth to a boy. She alleged that the baby was from Jure. The people went to Jure and broke down his hermitage, pulled him out of it and abused him. He, per he performed ablution and offered a prayer. Then he went to the male baby and asked him, Oh boy, who is your father? The baby replied that his father was the shepherd. The people said that they would build for him a hermitage, hermitage of gold, but Jure asked them to make it of mud only.